Let's check it out. Nice. I think we should be coming in live, and there we are. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel, and welcome to the live stream. Today, today is October 31st, 2021. Happy Halloween. And we're doing a math touring session number 77, which is probably an underestimate of how many we've done so far. Um, I hope you have a fantastic fall. Uh, interesting times, interesting times. But we must never forget that the name of the game is mathematics. And this is sort of me making myself available as often as possible to um, just do drop in math tutoring sessions, uh, make myself available for a couple hours, trying to do it once a week, but most likely it's turning out to be once every two weeks, so twice a month, uh, to help people out uh, with mathematics, uh, mainly focus on high school mathematics, but we do expand to elementary school and post-secondary mathematics as well. Um, and we've covered a lot. We've covered a lot. I have a few hundred videos, probably over 500 videos online uh, regarding mathematics. Yoshi, how are you doing? Great to catch you again while I'm repotting my bonsai. Ah, nice, nice, nice. What kind of bonsai? Cannabis bonsai? <laughs> Cannabis bonsai should be almost over, unless you got on the lights, permanent lights. Um, one of the, uh, the amazing ones that I like, the um, jade. Jade ones are beautiful, especially when the trunk starts getting thicker and thicker. It's got like three or four branches going off with minor leaves. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right? Fun. Aside from that, gang, um, while we wait for people to roll in, it's a ficus bonsai. Ficus bonsai. Chinese uh, ban banyan. I gotta look that up. I'm gonna look that up right now, actually, <laughs> while we wait for people to roll in and me do an intro. Uh, the bonsai trees are, they, they could be so beautiful, so beautiful. And some of them so old, so old. Oh, one of these ones, nice, nice, nice. Ah, beautiful, beautiful beautiful how many how many years old super cool super cool i gotta get into bonsai uh, having bonsai plants all over the place fun i uh, gang if you want to if you want to know what this work is about i am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho c h y c h o you can follow the work there you can support the work there everything's layered on the mathematics Almost everything's layered on mathematics, and I don't put anything behind paywall. Everything's Creative Commons. Share and share alike. So, if you want to know what it is that we are doing, Patreon is a great way to do so, and we do have a subscribe star page as well. And the links will be in the description of this video once it's been loaded on to our video sharing platforms. And for those of you that are supporting this work on Patreon, gang, thank you very much for the support. I hope you're enjoying the content that we are creating uh, it's all over the place but there is a theme to it as you know and I appreciate the support very much we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e yoshi they surely are beautiful and can be very old luckily mine is uh, rated beginner safe nice I really don't know how old it is maybe five to ten years old cool 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 yeah I've seen some that are like 30 40 years old it's like whoa so cool takes serious care it's like wow and pride and joy of some people's collection uh, bonsai I don't know anyone that's got a huge bonsai collection but I've been to some people's homes friends that I've had or associates where they have one or two usually just one hanging around and um, uh, beautiful beautiful i hope you take care of it well yoshi and uh, for those of you that are here on twitch gang thank you very much for the support thank you for being here uh, thank you for the moss for taking care of business thank you for the follows thank you for the subs thank you for the conversations and the questions when we are doing mathematics and other streams it is in large part because of the support we're getting on these two platforms that we're able to do what it is that we are doing 
I do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on Mines, VK Gap, Parlor, Getter, and BitCloud. You can follow the work there. Taco Operator, how are you doing? Good morning, good morning. And we do have a Discord page, exclamation mark, Discord. You can come to our Twitch chat anytime you want. Type in exclamation mark, Discord, and the invite will pop up. And there is an invite in the link uh, in the description of these videos once they are uploaded to our video sharing platforms and we got almost a thousand people sharing information and whatnot long time no see chicho i've missed you <laughs> so i've slowed down on the streams a little bit because i've been crazy busy doing certain things adjusting maneuvering uh, but we're going to get back into more regular sessions so we have a lot more time uh, a lot more streams to pop in thanks for popping in by the way Oh, they tough. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Have you been? I've been good. Uh, adjusting, adjusting our lives uh, because of uh, we're resisting fascism. So uh, when you take on such a task, and I think personally, everyone should take it on <laughs> because the last thing you want to live under is a fascist, totalitarian, oligarchy, technocratic oligarchy that controls every aspect of your life that's a dystopian society so i have no desire to live in such a state of being so doing whatever we can to make sure we resist it and educate people and mathematics is a huge part of that huge 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 and we will look at some of the data at some point in the future to really make sure it's appreciated the the ludicrous state that the world has fallen under and there's some amazing data to look at kyle m parker hello hello hey chicho hi chat let's go brandon da, da, da. <laughs> the man the legend smith how are you doing yoshi i'm doing my best to take care of it good luck uh for you to start your own buzz thank you i'm not into it yet. I, I i'm not there yet i'm not there yet if i if i ever do one a bonsai and i will do one at some point most likely it's going to be a jade most likely it's going to be a jade unfortunately we had a jade that we had for like 40 years get hit by bugs and really get under stress and uh, we lost that huge beautiful jade plant two years ago two three years ago or so try to do everything to save it but it didn't happen um but it, i like the jades i like the jades and maybe if i set up lights permanent with a mother plant i'll do a cannabis one as well <laughs> talk operator i found a new job in data administration of canadian products nice uh, i've been given an extension contract fulfilling a year into my work nice nice what kind of data are you managing joe how are you doing welcome to another live stream good afternoon from the uk only woke up three hours ago after the stream last night i bet we did a current events live stream gang last night and uh it was 8 p.m starting my eight yeah 8 p.m starting my time which was and uk went ahead an hour i think so it was like 5 a.m uk time <laughs> and people in the uk stuck stuck around to uh participate in the discussion that was super fun we had an unboxing going on as well where someone sent us a care package and wow rock and roll that was fantastic that was fantastic we went back an hour you went back an hour okay so back an hour so not as bad but the body doesn't realize all oh, the clock's been set back an hour so you saved an hour and good good morning if you just woke up uh how many hours ago three hours ago i hope you had good breakfast i hope you had good breakfast for live streams gang when we don't have any visuals we will upload the audio to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho as a podcast and those podcasts should be available in your favorite podcasting platform including spotify and itunes and this is a mathematics drop and tutoring session and we will be uploading this to sensor to to pitch to rumble and to odyssey and depending on the you know what we cover if we cover anything so open discussion uh most likely we'll pull segments out and uh and uh upload them individually mr brain freeze thank you very much is gifting one tier one sub to chicho lives community 
is their first gift sub in the channel. Awesome. Gifted it to Kyle and Parker. Thank you, Mr. Brain Freeze, for the tier one gift. Yay, Kyle. <laughs> you got access to more emotes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to take these things down, gang. And all the links will be in the description of these videos, gang. And again, if you want to follow all of our content, you want to be subbed on Bitchute Rumble and Odyssey. Uh, we are definitely, most definitely uh, shadow banned on uh, sensor tube. So not even the mathematics is being promoted. Uh, or recommend it to most people. And hey, G, how are you doing? Smoke them if you got them. <laughs> uh, so, bitch, you rubble and Odyssey is where you want to be. Okay, I'm going to take these things down. And all the links will be in the description of this video after it's been uploaded. And mods, thank you for taking care of business. Uh, Twitch mods, taco. I manage data, like for example, a bag of almonds from President's Choice. And I enter all the information like manufacturer warranty, how many grams it is, what's the sub brand, allergy statements, and a bunch more. So my job is for businesses to have easy access to product information. Ah, cool. So you must be working for a large company or distributor, most likely. Is it a distributor? It must be a distributor because if you've got a lot of products, uh, administration of Canadian products. Or is it government? Uh, data, man, data sets are amazing. I work for the DDC. DDC, what's the DDC stand for? DDC, DDC. Take a guess what DDC is. Uh, <laughs> distribution. C must be Canada, no? Data distribution Canada. These acronyms, I have a hard time figuring out what acronyms mean. DDC, you're funny, you're funny. I've, I've done data entry too, uh, and data management. Department of Domeland, <laughs> Department of Domeland Security. <laughs> Oh, funny, funny, and that gang, the data, huge data stuff is is crazy. Like, I I've got my I've mentioned this before. I have my SAP certificate, right? That's an SAP thing. I got my FI financial SAP certificate, but I got a job after I got my certificate working. I forget what the module was called, but basically pushing through uh, skews skews of um, uh, of products. And we were just filling in numbers just to make sure the skew went from one pointer was able to go to one place, even if the data set was inaccurate, right? It, that's what a gong show it was. Uh, so it was interesting. No abs, only kebabs. How are you doing? You're so good with math. I bet you have a master. No, no, not a master's degree. No, I got my geophysics degree with a minor in mathematics. The honors co-op geophysics degree so a little bit more amplified uh, with a minor in mathematics at the time I was the only person from the earth science geophysics department that had ever graduated with a math minor i took some extra courses to make sure that happened uh, and i've done a lot of data uh, processing and stuff like analyzing just working 10 years as a geophysicist uh, but um, yeah so i'm not a mathematician i just know how to use mathematics in my life to improve my life to enhance my life to keep me informed and as far as i'm concerned that's the mathematics that we all need to know that's what i that's what i teach uh, if anyone wants to be a mathematician more power to you uh, but uh, for me the first priority is to make sure people are literate in the language of mathematics taco operator i have no idea we have a ton of pro uh, projects from around the globe. It's not just from Canada. My boss, my boss, don't even know what it stands for. <laughs> Talk hilarious. Welcome, welcome to data management. Welcome to bureaucracy and big data. It's it's part of the bureaucracy. So that's what it's referred to. That's where it's categorized. That's where it goes, and. Good luck to anyone that tries to correct the bureaucratic system. Um, 
as one person that used to come here their username was bureaucracy kills and they were 100 percent correct bureaucracy kills and no abs only came off your sap certified wow i want to do the um wp warehousing module would you recommend it uh yeah i i would i recommend it i don't know what the job market is uh for sap right now when i got certified it was back in 2000 uh like 20 years ago i got a sap certified i took the course in montreal uh it was it was fun uh, it was amazing i got a video out there uh i think i pull out a segment i told a story about it and i have a video out there if you do i think chicho sap sap and should pop up uh, i'll give you a lowdown of uh, what it is um it really depends on a on the job opportunities if it's worth it or not it costs a fair chunk of money to get certified unless you're being sent by a company to get certified uh, you want to be involved in rollouts implementations because that gives you the most experience and that kicks you up in the uh in pay grade right if you've ever done a rollout that's when your pay grade goes up you don't want to just be the the data entry person right because that means you don't see the larger picture and you're not involved in the implementation the hard work and sometimes those projects take a long time is it worth it it's really up to you uh, if you enjoy that type of work if you think investing the money to get that certificate and the job opportunities are there sure why not for me was it worth it um, I worked in the field a little bit okay but pretty quickly I found out I didn't want to be in it so I moved on from it right so I spent a fair bit of money getting that certificate I probably made the same amount of money back if not more and on the on the experience front for sure it was worth it I learned a lot I taught myself accounting and I got the certificate at the same time um, and I realized what ERP uh, enterprise resource uh, planning companies do data management does how they operate so it gave me a really good perspective of what is what we're capable to do with big data not just on a corporate level but on a societal level right so it was worth it for me uh would i do it again yeah i would do it again um but maybe i would try to find a job in the implementation aspect of it at the time the job market had collapsed a little bit it was after the dot-com bubble so uh, but I, you know, I, if I hung around long enough, I would have got offers to do implementation and stuff like this. Salary would have gone through the roof and whatnot. But I moved on from there and started teaching mathematics, which I think is a is an amazing decision from my part. Uh, it just worked out really well. Kyle, to Mr. Brain Freeze, thank you so much for gifting me a subscription to this channel. Awesome, awesome, indeed, Mr. Freeze. Thank you very much. And gang, don't forget, free Assange, free Assange, free Assange. Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. For more information, please see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or our Julian Assange and Wikileaks playlist on Sensor 2. Uh, no app says SAP professionals made like 200,000 K a year. Yeah. And that was the salary back then as well. So I'm surprised if, if it, that it's not more. Uh, so once you get the experience, your salary goes through the roof, right? Uh, it's a lot of smoke and mirrors as well. Okay. There was a lot of smoke and mirrors involved in it as well. Uh, in terms of how prestigious it's considered to be um, because it's sort of a clique uh, you could call it a cult <laughs> to a certain degree right uh, it was interesting it was interesting it was interesting taco the only bad part of my job is that they make me enter information in French oh no and I don't even know it more than four thirds of the staff don't know French, but you still type it in French. You could use that opportunity to learn French, Taco. So that could be an amazing opportunity to, while you're doing this, to learn French since you're entering it in, right? But I'm pretty sure it's just certain key, key phrases and stuff that you're entering in. So you're not getting a full spectrum of uh, the language, 
of communicating language so it's just certain keywords that you must enter in right uh, but it, look any jobs that you guys are in if even if you're not fond of it try to use it to your advantage and learn something from it right mr brain fees to kyle no problem have a good day awesome awesome yeah uh, no app salesforce oracle uh, abs microsoft dynamics now providing fierce competition to sap yeah and uh, oracle was around back then as well uh, salesforce is more new when i got my sap certificate uh, i don't believe salesforce was around i think salesforce came around in the mid 2000s so it was oracle sap and i believe there was another company that was involved in that sap is a german company and the software i love the software so intricate but very problematic very problematic um i'm not sure how, what sap stock is doing recently uh, i should look at it actually just to see what it's about um, but salesforce has gone through the roof right but salesforce has gone through the roof for other reasons than just their enterprise resource planning uh, tech they're also involved with the davos group and the world economic forum and the certain agendas so there's other factors in play taco i've learned french words like no iron <laughs> this is sun. no iron sans fur uh candy bonbons <laughs> it's, it's mostly food-based knowledge that i've learned <laughs> your vocabulary you're a walking candy machine french candy words tick, 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 tick. hilarious funny 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 hedgy to taco my ancestors were french citizens who moved to india in the 1650s wow 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 gang i got the snacks i'm still eating my applesauce applesauce with feta cheese applesauce and feta cheese so delicious gang so delicious sweet and salty and dairy sorry hedgy i know you don't like the like the dairy but so yummy so yummy like you do this and you do this and you pop a feta cheese and some applesauce that is really good I have you have I hope you have amazing snacks. I should have brought more cheese. I'll partic or ration my cheese. It's really super delicious. <laughs> As you says applesauce is good. Keep the white that white death. Yeah, I need to reduce my uh, dairy intake, to tell the truth. But man, super delicious taco hedgy. Sorry if I've offended your heritage, but French sounds good to the ear. But my hands, when I type it in, they want to commit <laughs> to commit no no work. French. We had to learn French in uh, Canada for a number of years in high school. Didn't learn very much. We're here to do mathematics, gang. If you got math questions, if not, we just talk. We chill. Um, for me, I've had a lot of people, um, a lot of requests um, privately to be teaching mathematics. I've picked up a fair bit of students. No, I think in the last couple of years, people have realized their centralized education system, as I mentioned before, is complete garbage. So uh, parents are desperate to make sure their children learn mathematics. And a lot of kids are desperate to learn mathematics because they know how important it is. Um, so it's uh, if you're considering a business to get into, uh, like a private business you get into, if you want to uh, tip your toes in the industry, try tutoring mathematics or if you're good at it you will have clientele uh, word of mouth will get out 
not remotely. I don't speak French, but I speak four other languages. Nice. That's good. I think Hedgie speaks uh, German, um, Cantonese, English, obviously. What's the fourth language? Hedgie. Mandarin and Cantonese? Do you speak both? And tea in the morning is amazing. So good. Russian? Russian. Russian, German, Cantonese, and Urdu. And English. Edgy, you speak five languages. You speak Urdu too? Urdu is the... Is it the main language in India? I mean, India's got so many languages. The language of love. Zulu. Haha. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I don't know if you're joking or not. <laughs> it could be. Warriors are very passionate. So it could be the language of love. And death. Why not? Love and death. That's the language of... Uh, uh, the powerful language of the Zulu. So you speak six lang uh, five languages, uh, Haji. I speak three. English, my best. Uh, and gang, if you ever get the opportunity to learn other languages, it gives you a dif different perspective on life, right? <coughs> different, different perspective on life. And uh, by the way, gang, if we have no mathematics to talk about, we can talk about whatever we want and whatever comes up. Uh, if it's not deemed uh, appropriate, uh, the sensors will block us on sensor tube. We'll just make a little notice and just load up whatever segment we're loading up to sensor tube, and the rest will go on the other video sharing platforms. Hedgie, no, I learned it as it's the language of commerce between India and Pakistan. Oh, between India and Pakistan, uh, Urdu. Okay. So it's the language of commerce between India and Pakistan. So that's what uh, most people speak for business transactions and stuff. Eh? Cool. Mr. Brain Freeze. A lot of my colleagues use SAP. I recently started working as a database administrator. Still got a lot to learn. Cool. Yeah, databases are, I mean, that's what in the last 20 years, really, the world as uh exploded the world of data management has exploded 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 it's problematic really uh to our societies and also beneficial we just have to as julian assange and edward stone and many other people that know a lot about how data is managed by centralized power as they have stated we must have privacy anonymity infrastructure software that provides that privacy which is basically liberty by design and the only way to do that is through mathematics so there's a lot going on in the data management world uh, some of it is going down a dark path uh, some of it can be extremely enlightening uh, and beneficial to society unfortunately those that are that are well funded are pushing the world towards the dark path of big data we have to turn that around if we can right joe chicho i'm not sure if this counts as a math question but could you do a quick review of the difference between torque and horsepower oh man i would have to look it up uh torque is <laughs> horsepower it's just different formulas right different different uh what do you call it uh units torque is basically the oh man i, I don't even want to paraphrase it but it's uh rotational force i guess from like like there's rotation involved in torque horsepower is just pure power the raw force used to do something right so torque engines have horsepower but they're two different um 
units really two different metrics uh, and torque could be used you know in the lever you get more torque if you go down the thing i would have to look it up joe um unfortunately that's less math related more physics related when it comes to the definitions of them and i haven't done any horsepower questions or torque questions for a very long time even though i got my ge geophysics degree and i've done a lot of this in the past um but for some reason i uh, i used to have a lot of physics 11 and 12 students i don't anymore it's mainly become math uh students um i'm sorry if you if you remind me i will look it up uh, before our next math stream and i can do a little intro to it then uh, if i get the chat if i get the time to break it down and stuff our first math question and i'm um, um dancing around it right sleepy waves chicho missed yesterday's stream happy to join you for a little today awesome welcome welcome sleepy waves it was a good stream yesterday sleepy waves fun taco i i only know bosnian serbian croatian but they're very similar but i do know english very well and my german isn't bad but needs work french just beginning man you speak a lot of languages <laughs> that's pretty damn good that's pretty good let's do some math in the real world oh god i i know where you want to go hedgy we will do a math that mathematics at some point uh, really especially the 95 percent efficacy thing which is crazy uh, 95 <laughs> percent uh if you know what i'm talking about it's basically how i'll give you a little hint on people right what's the difference uh i have to look it up i have to look up their definitions uh between 0 0.04 and 0 0.88 right what what can you do with these two numbers well you could do this you could say 0 0.8 Eight. Let's do this. Zero point zero four minus zero point eight eight divided by zero point eight eight. This is equal to zero point eight four divided by zero point eight eight, which is equal to approximately ninety five point zero point nine five. Which is, if you do it, it's. Let's do a little eraser. 0 0.95 which is equal to 95 approximately 95 percent <laughs> if you were on our discord page if you're in a certain folder which is the topic of discussion in the world for the last two years these numbers will ring a bell if you watched about a two minute video that i posted a link to right at some point we'll dig into this at some point we'll dig into this and this data and we'll see where it takes us this we'll see where it takes us taco to edgy hold your horses croatian is one of the hardest languages to learn so be warned take it at your pace really torque uh, taco is torque 0 to 60 in some sense is it, is it I don't know I, I don't know what that means 0 to 60 um, are we talking about torque engines I'm not 100% sure hedgy torque simply is the ability of a vehicle to perform work specifically the twisting force applied by the crankshaft horsepower is how rapidly the vehicle can perform that work for instance a lightweight sports car that operates at high rpm may have high horsepower but low torque yeah so they don't necessarily uh, have to be both correlated the same way right high torque means high horsepower there are engines that have minimal torque the older engines really that have a huge horsepower right um 
but in general torque engines if i remember correctly from the time i was looking at the cars um, you can get more horsepower with uh, smaller engines and high torque the rx7 was one of the and heavy engines the torque engines rx7 we we used to our family used to have an rx7 at some point uh back in the 90s late 80s 90s and those are they were fun cars man now uh, 86 rx7 87 rx7s man what a car i would love to own one of those cars again um and nice and powerful for what it was and a heavy uh front very heavy front and that heavy front and the car being low saved my life and my mom's life one day we were driving down the highway i was going around 130 clicks an hour or something like this if you know be british columbia hope and it was during sunset and during sunset and sunrise deer move animals tend to move and going about 130 on a straight highway saw a deer over here did a little look over there when you see a deer if you're driving be careful deer do not travel alone right if you see one deer there are other deers there it's like a herd thing right so i looked over there and as soon as i looked in front of me there was a full-grown deer right in front of us and 130 clicks an hour boom nailed it the deer hit the front side uh of the car lucky for us it was an rx7 that we were driving um uh, not rx um, yeah rx7 uh at the time we had a crx as well if we had hit that car hit that deer at that speed with a honda crx car would have been crushed uh chicho would probably not be here right nor chicho's mom right so that deer would have taken me and my mom out with an rx7 uh, with a crx honda crx because we were driving an rx7 it's a it's a heavy car heavy front the deer we hit it the deer flew up the top of the deer hit the top of the car lucky for us the rx7 was low otherwise it would have gone through the windshield and the deer flew and we skidded i was somehow was able to keep control i was a young kid right so i guess my reflexes were pretty good i was still able to keep control we didn't flip we didn't roll over we didn't do we didn't go down an embankment there was an embankment right beside us right and i i stopped the car and i did a little double take got out and i saw the deer sort of trying to get up and uh he had flown he had flown like like down the embankment it was trying to get up i was like oh man i had a deer so and we were on a road trip we were going from vancouver to toronto and this is the first day first couple of hours we hit a deer damn so got in the car checked the car and the car was dented in the front you couldn't open up the hood there's hair in the in the hood and stuff like this couldn't open it we realized that we can't continue the car road trip we have to go get the car fixed it didn't look that bad but it was bad <laughs> so the car was still driving luckily took the exit came back by the time we went back that way the deer was already dead like he was done it was a full-blown full-blown deer and uh found a cop station close by reported the case and drove back and the next day car got towed to uh, the mechanics to get fixed and we hopped in the rx7 and drove across the next day so we didn't wait for the car to get fixed that's my deer killing story <laughs> taco is this how uh racist cowboys <laughs> <think they are. laughs> no no it's related to something else i understand this map that you says indeed indeed smith negative it's negative it's negative oh negative that's right negative 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 thank you thank you thank you and if I do anything wrong with the mathematics, correct me, gang. Sleepy ways, Chicho. During the pandemic, there was a lot of uncertainty in many industries and sectors, and hence that created a lot of opportunity to buy in and take advantage of some hidden opportunities. This half year of 20, 
21 we are seeing the effects of inflation and everywhere uh, inflation everywhere and now even used items randomly around the house have shot up in higher value than before what are your predictions for all the inflation that will probably continue to grow um, it's going to continue to grow uh, like exactly what you said right um, supply chain might be fixed at some point but there's a lot of a uh, lot of hands in the cookie jar that they do not want this information uh, not information well information to get out that's one thing but the supply chain to be restored because they have gained a lot of power and they will be able to buy up a lot of industries on the cheap 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 right so it, and there's money uh, money supply that has kicked up a lot um, there's there are uh, if we're going into a multipolar world so it might be difficult to have access to certain products in the future as easily as we had access to them in the past uh, that there's regulations coming in so for example in Vancouver right so in Vancouver uh, the city of Vancouver was trying to pass a tax tax on the citizens and governments are coming for more taxes that's why they want to digitize all currency by the way if you live in a country that they're eliminating cash from that country and Canada might be one of them at some time in the future you may want to decide to leave that country because you have lost complete anonymity and privacy which means you have lost your liberty because governments want to tax every single bit of transaction you you have in your life including paying a babysitter including paying the neighbor's kid to mow the lawn or wash your car or lemonade stand little kids that set up a little lemonade stand in front of their house they even want taxes from that right but in vancouver they were trying to pa pass a tax law and it, i don't think it passed this year but they'll try again next year right where every citizen living in vancouver would have to pay for parking okay and anybody that was buying a brand new SUV from 2022 and on okay would have to pay an extra thousand dollars in taxes per year to um, get insurance on that car and an extra five hundred dollars for something else right so brand new SUVs were gonna be like an extra thousand dollars a year right in taxes well if I wanted to buy an SUV I wouldn't buy a new one I would buy an older one so older SUV prices might go up lucky for me I have an older SUV that's been sitting there that I'm most likely gonna get uh, fixed up and sold in the next few months for I wasn't really planning on it but because of certain situation family situation where our household family is being cut in half because of certain mandates where uh, my partner being a nurse will not no longer be able to work as a nurse uh, because the government will allow her to work as a nurse I'm most likely going to be selling the car to generate a little bit of funds to give us a little bit more buffer right so there's certain things going on it's not just specifically supply chain related it's mandate related it's centralized power trying to grab more power related it's corporations trying to screw over society and obtain more control uh, related it's politics not necessarily economics right hedgy the bigger the vehicle the more torque is important over horsepower is that what it is hedgy cool cool now i need to find that bus deer video <laughs> I, th I might have told that story before I think I have told that story before I don't know if I have a segment of it out taco the rx7 is the car with the uh, wanker uh, winkle engine it's a rotary engine yeah indeed rotary engine high torque rotary engine that has an internal triangle making sealed rotations that makes high rpms for performance but top speed is around 190 kilometers per hour cool uh, 
it was it was a beautiful car at the time when it came out really I really like driving uh, both the CRX and the RX 7 okay they were fun cars to drive fun cars to drive Cheryl this time of year is freaky with deer here they pop up anywhere and everywhere yeah yeah yesterday a couple of days ago we were driving we almost again almost hit a deer on the highway and man gang I'm an animal lover really but deers are the dumbest 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 animals out there they see a car coming they freeze right supposedly if you see a deer on the highway when you're driving and they stop in front of you blink your headlights and the blinking lights is supposed to kick him out of their hypnosis and they'll run right but when a deer comes and a lot of animals actually do this even squirrels do this when you see them they'll freeze right because they think when they freeze you won't see them because a lot of predators uh, function their their visuals function on motion right so if you freeze the predator won't be able to recognize you because you're not moving right so they consider I guess cars to be predators and they freeze now freezing in front of a car moving at 120 130 140 kilometers per hour or 100 clicks per hour is not a good idea especially if the drivers are not in you know that experience so supposedly blinking your headlights works but super dangerous Cheryl super dangerous deers take out a lot of people uh, on highways so when you see deer crossing signs on the highway pay attention those deer crossing or moose crossing or any animal crossing signs they're there because most likely someone has died on that highway and there's been a lot of accidents on that highway right in that zone where there's a deer crossing or whatever animal crossing so they only put up those signs there is because that is a pathway for the animals to go right so pay attention road signs mean something okay uh, be aware be aware smith i thought that did pass no did it pass in vancouver that tax someone told me a few days ago that it didn't pass uh i'm i'm guessing it might have passed that, that was my assumption but they said it didn't and my reply was well they didn't pass it this year they'll pass it next year right uh, but if you find the link where it did pass Smith uh, link it up for us on discord uh, that'd be great I'd like to know uh, because that's insane to me hedgy they ain't taking my money all my sheep friends are so excited about a no cash society are they no man they're excited about it I don't know some form of underground economy will pop up barter system preferably uh, but it's if they eliminate cash in Canada I will begin to uh, set my life and my family's life in motion to go to a country where cash is uh, the name of the game the name of the game Joe Chicho what do you mean by torque engine uh, what would be an example of a non-torque engine like uh, I think every engine has torque but the RX-7 the, the I've looked in the inside of the RX-7 it's a different type of it's not pistons going up and down like a V8 pistons go up and down there's still torque there but the main power I, I, again I'm not I'm not I don't know my car engines well at all right it was just I'm going by memory from like 34 years ago right but regular engines were pistons going up and down v6 v8 v10 whatever right but the rx7 was a torque engine I don't know how it really functioned but it was a rotation when you turn it on you felt the car go whoa right it was pretty cool actually some of the v8s did that too but you really felt the car whoa, whoa. so there was a rotation involved in it that's where it got most of its power through the rotation i don't think that's the way it works for the v um, for the straight v6s or v8s and stuff like this 
I would have to look it up. I, I don't know. All I know is the torque engines got their power, uh, their horsepower through rotation, while the other engines got their horsepower through, I don't know, just brute force, I guess. I don't know how to work, though, the truth. Ronnie, how are you doing? Welcome to another live stream. Joe, Chicho, isn't China already a cashless society? They use an app to buy stuff. Yeah, complete dystopian, right? And China went from cash to digital in a matter of like two, three years. I had friends that traveled to China a lot in the past anyway. And they said, they said, Chicho, last year like this is a few years ago we talked they said last year we were there you know you could buy everything you just went to little vendors you just bought stuff with cash they said that year that they went the following year they went barely anybody would take cash they laughed at you when they said cash they're like cash what do we do with this they don't know what to do with it it was all app based right and one of the richest people in china was the one that uh, the company that rolled out this digital currency and he was actually threatening or he he was deemed to be a threat to the Chinese to the CCP and they took control back a little bit from his company so it's dangerous taco yesterday I went as Jason Horvies it was a day before Halloween and I wanted to surprise people and one guy came to me and asked dude are you okay is this wait a second Jamin Horries is that Halloween Jason Halloween I don't know who Jason Horries is who's Jason Horries I gotta look this up I'm gonna look this up I need a visual I need a visual of this Doop. Jason Horvies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Halloween. Cool, cool, cool. Dude, are you okay? <laughs> or Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. Dude. Oh, fun, fun. Hey, the system named FacePay allows users to uh, to look into a camera at special entrance tra uh, turnstiles fitted in the metro's 241 stations instead of tapping in with a bank or metro card oh my god friday 13th chap yeah yeah like this digital surveillance that's being rolled out in the western world um extremely dangerous gang extremely dangerous it's is related to big data it's math um a lot of mathematics in it and uh, dystopian very much so applesauce and feta cheese is it Moscow yeah they're gonna roll that on and they're gonna try to roll that on the UK and whatnot I hope people resist so good I hope you got good snacks this morning. We're on Sunday morning doing mathematics. I don't think we're getting too many, too many takers to do math on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Hilarious. Sleep away, Chicho. How much are houses around where you live versus uh, renting them? And has it increased sign uh, insignificantly over the last few years or significantly after uh, houses prices and houses where I live is insane insane rent is problematic as well right so we've we've had friends that want to go to school okay and they come here uh, like this is sort of a university town so there's university and colleges around and stuff like this and they can't find an affordable place to live so they either choose to do it online or decide not to come not to pursue their education um so 
rent is very expensive here but housing is extremely expensive here as well but it, it's about to collapse the housing market is about to collapse i believe as long as wall street is not allowed to buy all the all the homes the banks and stuff um because interest rates are about to kick up in 2022 and once interest rates kick up a lot of people are over leveraged once interest rates kick up then there's going to be a lot of people that won't be able to afford that price hike in their mortgage monthly payment in their mortgage and once the lock and anybody that's got a floating interest rate is going to be in deep trouble and anyone that's locked it in for five years once it starts kicking in 2022 let's say they just buy it then lock it in before it goes up by 2027 they'll have to renegotiate their mortgage if anybody's smart that's already locked into a mortgage and they only have a year or two left in it they would go in and renegotiate their mortgage again lock it in again for an extended period of time um because once interest rates go up a lot of people will not be able to afford the payments especially since governments are coming in and increasing taxes as well i've you know we know people who own, who own homes and in the last two years the taxes on the home have gone up like 15 20 percent right some even more so just imagine if your cost of living in your home in regards to taxes goes up 20 percent in two years or a year right that's a lot Renaults has gone up water has gone up electricity has gone up gas has gone up just everything's gone up right Seventeen twenty-four here in UK and sun has vanished. Oh, seventeen twenty-four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What time? So you're eight hours. So long, eight, nine hours ahead. Nine hours ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, what? Wait a second. What's going on? I'm losing my count again. You're eight hours ahead, but then you guys went back an hour, so you're seven hours ahead now. Hedgy, is that correct? You're seven hours ahead math on planning a move to a new place yeah we should do we should do depending on the place it varies so much now like people in certain parts of the world uh, house prices have dropped have already started dropping so have rent prices because people are leaving those areas either because they have become draconian uh, or their taxes have gone up uh, there's no jobs whatever it might be Cheryl I even asked my son if he had any questions algebra one is so far so good this year but will ramp up in the next um, marking period okay yeah for sure Cheryl we're gonna keep on doing I'm gonna make sure I keep on doing this um, I was getting a little bit burnt out I just have to adjust to this new schedule with all these students coming in uh, so I've been doing a lot of math with students um, and it i've done i've done this level before but i had to stabilize right uh, going from coming in from the summer to a level where you're doing a lot of math it takes a little bit of get into that rhythm now that i'm in that rhythm we're going to do a lot more math so it, it, keep keep the questions that your son may have cheryl and anybody else gang if you if you know anyone that has math questions or you have math questions that are going to come up if you're taking a math course write them down next time when we do drop in math tutoring session just come with your questions and say hey how do we do this how do we do this how do we do this if we can we'll help you out right Joe Chicho rent prices here in the UK are absolutely insane a lot of places are around 1,000 pounds a month for a tiny apartment what can the government do to control rent prices rent control uh, that's about the same price here as well Joe if not more it's expensive here what the government can do is get out of our lives that's what the government can do what the one of the reasons uh, there is a housing issue right now is because government has cut the supply chain right with mandates and locking everyone down another reason is regulation and taxes right like and I know this because our family was involved in housing uh, construction residential construction since the late 1970s right and I worked in construction for 
three decades okay with the family right i did geophysics and stuff and i still did construction the first time i worked on a construction site in the house that we were building was in grade eight i was 13 years old right that's what you do i like i just went there and work it was good for me really if you can get into working when you're young especially construction you build muscle you get stronger right so back then if you wanted to build a house you could build a house with inspection coming in and you did your inspections and you paid them their fees and they buggered off the government and you build a house solid house now the licensing and inspection and all this stuff costs so much money that it's basically cheaper to buy an older house than it is to build a new house right that's what government has done that's one of the reasons there's a, a housing shortage right because government is trying to control every aspect of our lives and it's bureaucracy and bureaucracy kills right rent control sure but that's not the solution that's a band-aid right they need to get rid of regulations up the yin yang f off government that's my take okay seven hours ahead seven hours cool 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 sleepy waves by the way did the rest of europe kick their clock back a four uh, back an hour as well or is it just the uk did that, that did it so with chicho interesting framework to consider when looking at the tactics from an eastern totalitarian countries like china and singapore whereas whereas they're pretty blunt about where they draw the line with their citizens versus the neoliberal oiled cog machine of the u.s where it grabs power every year and painting a pretty picture to its citizens so they don't realize what's actually happened yeah pretty much right you're free to do what we tell you to do right that's the kicker they don't finish the sentence in the western world you're free everyone thinks that's it they don't they don't read past the first two words you're free to do what we tell you to do they don't realize that part of it right taco if thanos snapped his fingers could he make two plus two equal fish indeed of course <laughs> smith define two plus equals and fish <laughs> peanut butter pumpkin party how you doing nice underwear fish equals two plus two hilarious hilarious and gang don't forget free assange free assange free assange julian assange is a publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity he's in trial right now pay attention to what's going on for more information see wikileaks.org defend.wikileaks.org or our julian assange and wikileaks playlist on sensor two smith then yes two plus two equals fish but what if you reverse the two and the two does two plus two equal two plus two equal fish <laughs> funny taco to smith that's also a probability that is that is that is my rent is uh Hedgie says my rent is 730 pounds a week that's considered to be cheap here even for like a studio is considered to be here studio where you basically it's just one room you got the kitchen you got whatever is canadian it's like 12 to 1400 dollars canadian it's expensive it's expensive smith two plus two equals four equals fish cancel out the f assume f, <laughs> f zero then our is fish <laughs> they're both four letters sure why not taco i don't pay rent i own my apartment from inheritance nice but you pay taxes you must pay maintenance fees monthly maintenance fees taco All right so like here people live in apartments they pay their their if they own the apartment they don't pay rent right uh but they have to pay anywhere between 300 to 600 dollars monthly fees maintenance fees right expensive some even more 
Hedge, in 2019, the European Parliament voted to scrap the twice a year custom of changing the clock. Cool. The last change was supposed to uh, be spring of this year, but the reform has since been delayed ahead of the time change. Uh, in Gardana, so China and and guard Garda Sochana said there was international evidence to show there was an increase in burglaries in the order of 20% in the winter month when daylight hours are at the lowest level ah makes sense darkness sleep with Chicho thoughts on TikTok is it disruptive technology maybe throwing off Instagram since people prefer TikTok since it's less regulated um maybe i don't i don't use TikTok. i, I looked into it um and sure it'd be a good place to promote uh, some of our stuff uh to get a more more audience but cost benefit uh i rather focus on some of the other stuff instagram is you know it has its uses i guess but it's garbage it's under facebook control and as far as uh, rest um, regulated TikTok, maybe that's just now. TikTok is a mainstream platform, controlled. It's completely monitored. There is no privacy on TikTok, so you know it's going to go in a certain direction as well. Uh, personally, I don't. I don't surf TikTok or Instagram. I don't use them. Uh, so. I don't really have too much of an opinion on them other than I'm not into them. Joe, everyone that I knew that finished university a couple of years ago has ended up living in a house share because they can't afford their own place. Yeah. Taco maintenance is $20 a month. That's it. No, dude. Taco, where are you living? By the way, you're you're in the you're in Romania area, aren't you? Eastern Europe? Like in Canada? I know people that live in apartment or own their apartments and complexes. They're paying 300 to $500 a month in maintenance. $20 a month. Smith, I can teach you some of the TikTok dances, Chicho. <laughs> And I've seen some stuff on TikTok, which is good. Really, I've seen some stuff on TikTok, which is good. But it's usually linked to me from another platform, right? I don't, because it can be addicted. I, I've, I've gone on there and this clip, this clip, this clip, this clip, this clip. By the time you blink, you've been on there for a while, looking at all this random info, and you've wasted a lot of time just looking at random stuff so ideally you want to find for me anyway I would want to find content which is worth consuming I'm not into there has been times in my life where I like the randomness just to kick the brain into neutral and do I do that still I maybe do it in certain forums where I'm accessing news uh, but I don't do it anymore because it can become an addiction it can become an issue so might as well stay away from it remember gang the algorithms are smarter than you if they're trying to program you right they've been designed to manipulate you because we know a lot about human psychology right and how to manipulate society and individuals and those companies those algorithms they use that information to get people addicted to the click to the click to the click and the swap and spending more time there i can teach you hedgy 1237 dollars canadian canadian dollars a week i pay for for one bedroom hedgy now that is good content TikTok, cheryl <laughs> hi cheryl how are you doing <laughs> Is your son still sleeping? Time to wake up. Let's go do some math. They probably don't. They don't have. It's only October, end of October, November, November. 
uh, and man they've got it the math curriculum so harshly right now it's dumbed down to a level which is ridiculous hey algorithm need a butlerian jihad against them <laughs> the sleeper must awaken the sleeper must awaken that for the whole pub Gijo. that for the whole pub hedgy that's what you pay for the whole pub no way dude serious i worked in a cigar store cuban cigar store as some of you might know in 2000 it was on a main drag vancouver's main street the most expensive street for retailers at the time this small store that had a walk-in humidor and a little lounge in the back that you you know you had eight chairs loungy chairs and leather chairs and stuff like this this small area they were paying thirty thousand dollars canadian rent a month okay and within four years i think that had kicked up to fifty thousand dollars in rent a month i don't i don't even know what it is now that was 20 years ago right insanity insanity not on the island says. insanity twelve hundred dollars for a pub rental man i need to find a cheaper place to live crazy <laughs> but i like this area and i do have a clientele here uh, but it's become it's it's become crazy it's become crazy the cost of living here is insane insane really uh, one thing that has happened though is uh, in the past canadians used to drive to the united states to buy gas because it was a lot cheaper now i saw the gas prices in california i don't know what it is in washington because i never did that drive over the border to get gas and come back to save money it just didn't register with me maybe if i had a huge huge truck that you would save a lot of money but in california the gas prices there used to be one of the cheapest uh in north america canada united states anyway now they're paying more in gas than in canada a lot more where i am so that's the situation there smith there's a cigar store downtown victoria i bought a comb there figured out yeah 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 there is one and it's a it's a husband and wife they're older couple right is that the one you went to smith that's where i got the boulevards we smoked i should do another smoking session did you see dune on uh, no i haven't seen it yet sleepy waves i do have access to it it popped up online somehow uh, but i haven't had a chance to watch it yet i haven't had a chance to watch it yet i'm looking forward to it lonely biggie how are you doing dune part two got green light nice nice yeah yeah smith that's the cigar store that's the cigar store lonely piggy let me show you my snack check this out delicious snack homemade applesauce homemade applesauce and feta cheese homemade applesauce and feta cheese go amazing together right so delicious like and these are apples that I picked, right? And you got the feta, so good. Joe Chicho, people in the U.S. who live near Canadian or Mexican often hop the border to buy insulin because it can be ten times cheaper. Hmm. Yeah, medicine-wise yeah americans come up here to buy medicine because it's cheaper in general i believe anyway i don't know if that's still the case but you know borders have been closed now they're opening up and stuff like this so we'll see hedgy basically a 100 pound a day for me i earned that in an hour of trade cool yeah depending where you are here rent is insane but by the way here's just a heads up just economics and stuff like this last week i went downtown uh, and in one block right where there used to be stores like the whole place was full in that block 
every retail space was taken and now in that one block i think there were nine uh, storefronts there five of them were boarded up closed so retail has been gutted restaurants they, they at least two restaurants were gone and a couple of other things i don't know what they were two or three other things were gone right so retail in my part of the world has been gutted that one block had seen one one place said they had moved i guess they found a cheaper place or a bigger place or a small place they moved to but more than 50 percent of the stores uh on that on that block were closed done that's how horrendous the government is in canada they've gutted the canadian economy so bad so bad so bad ronnie how con consistent uh, are your wins uh, lonely picket chicho always has cheese close by no i love my i gotta cut back on the cheese though really but i do like cheese i do like cheese sleepy ways hedgy makes uh makes sense that you paid that much for your place if you're a day trader and gang don't forget free assange free assange free assange Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or our Julian Assange and Wikileaks playlist on CensorTube. See, oh, we enjoy being a non self sufficient country out here, boys. Non sufficient self. So, let's read that. Non self sufficient country. Which one? If you're talking Canada, Canada should be one of the the most self-sufficient countries in the world because we have resources, we got water, we got land, we got uh, semi-intelligent population, I guess, considering where they're going. But uh, uh, it's insane that we're not anti-fragile. Hey, gee, I run a 700 capacity pub restaurant is doing really well now and i live in a very rough area so we don't see the bacon at all nice brother hedgy if uk goes in the right direction maybe i'll have to s skip town and i'll come live in the uk and give me a job at your restaurant <laughs> seal america the united states ronnie nice nice good luck edgy the two edgy goes yeah I'm crazy crazy and gang thank you absolute uh, absolutely Aussie thank you very much for the follow absolutely Aussie hey man what's up hello hello how are you doing absolutely Aussie are you from Australia man I hope I hope I hope you guys are able to resist have you ever been to the UK uh, I've been to no I went to Europe when I was traveling in Europe um, and I bought a Euro rail pass for a couple of months, but uh, the UK didn't accept it. And I was just traveling on the cheap, cheap, right? So I didn't go to the UK. I didn't go to London. I flew over and went to Ireland because they accepted it. So I went to Ireland, but I never made it to uh, the UK. I never made it to Wales or Scotland or England. Are you teaching math i am i am indeed absolutely aussie what do you got what do you got i'm not from australia but do you know how to do long division i forgot yeah for sure we can do long division let's do long division brother or sister of course long division let's do long division let's do simple long division for now right ronnie chicho i think i failed this exam that i uh, spent four months preparing for a spent countless hours after work and weekends during the summer and fall sadly the exam was soul crushing oh i'm sorry to hear that ronnie i've had that experience sometimes it's just it's just not your day and there is a thing called over studying as well right when you do too much yeah and what exam the uk will welcome you with open arms so thank you hedgy thank you hedgy Thank you for the follow uh gang uh aussie long division check this out we'll do simple one this is the example i use usually 27 divided by two right if you want to do this first time chat god bless you man <laughs> thank you very much muhammad daya 
Hey, you seem like a really nice person. I appreciate the good vibe. My pleasure, Ozzy. My pleasure. Check this out. 27 divided by 2. Ozzy, do you know what that is just off the top of your head? What's 27 divided by 2? If you had 27 apples and you're going to split it between two people, how many apples does each person get? That's what a fraction means, right? Part of a whole or dividing something up between a certain number of people. Not Muhammad, it's Mahmoud. Oh, Mahmoud, but all good. Mahmoud, how are you doing? 13.5. Exactly, Ozzy. Mahmoud, how are you doing? I've had I've had friends in my life called Mahmoud. I wonder where they are now. So this is 13.5, right? Remember, you can also write 13.5 as this. 13 and a half. You can also write it as this. 13 plus one and a half. Because if this guy, you're gonna add 13 plus one and a half you're gonna go 13 plus 1 over 2 and that's 13 over 1 common denominator is 2 right what did you multiply 1 by to give you 2 you multiply by 2 so you multiply 13 by 2 so you multiply this by 2 you get 26 plus 1 and you get back 27 over 2 okay I just want to clear that up so you see the link right nice to meet you as well Mahmoud Nice to meet you as well. Fret not, Ronald. I'll be passing the next round. Now, check this out. This is how you do long division. 2, 27. So whatever you're dividing into, you put it inside the division symbol. And whatever you're dividing it by, you put out here. And then you ask yourself, oh, you multiply it across the denominator so that it can... Uh, like be a common denominator okay that makes sense yeah and you can convert this as well going this way you could go 2 times 13 is 26 plus 1 is 27 right 27 over 2 that's the other way to convert it as well right but this is sort of a more visual of it okay now check this out when you're doing long division this is what you need to do you ask yourself you take this number and you look at the first number here you ask yourself, does 2 go into 2? And if so, how many times? And you say, okay, 2 goes into 2 once. So you put your 1 there. And whatever you put up here multiplies this, okay? And it's placed down here and you subtract it from this. You follow that pattern? So whatever you put up here multiplies this. And then whatever the result is, you put it here and you subtract it from the top, okay? So 2 minus 2 is 0. Once you hit this number, whatever this is, you're into, you move to the next number, right? And you can bring this number down. So every number you go, every step, you can bring down one number. Okay. I see what you show. Where do you think is a good place to live in the world? Uh, let's do this one. Uh, uh, sleepy ways ask the question again after we finish the long division so you bring the seven down and then ask yourself what do you multiply two by to give you seven or how many times does two go into seven that's the better question you don't go how what do you multiply two by to give you seven you ask yourself how many times does two go into seven evenly and that's three times so you put the three on top of the seven and then three multiplies the two and you put it here and you subtract it from here, right? So three times two is six. You subtract these, you get one. Okay. Now let me tell you how this plays out to this, right? So if you go 27 divided by two, what that equals, you go is 13 and one over two. One over two. So 13 and a half. This is called the quotient. This is called the divide, divisor, dividend. I forget what they're called. And this is called the remainder, right? So this is how the division works. Let's do another one. Okay, let's keep this up. Let's do another one here. Let's go three divided into 134, right? Here, let's do another one, 134. 1347 now you ask yourself what do you multiply 3 by to give you 1 well 3 doesn't go into 1 evenly right and then you ask yourself if it doesn't go evenly 
if this number is too small to contain this, you go to the next one and you ask yourself, what do you multiply 3 by or how many times does 3 go into 13 evenly? Well, 3 goes into 13 four times. So you don't put your 4 on top of the 1. You put it on top of the 3, whatever number it is that you're starting off with, the complete, right? So 4 times 3 is 12. You bring the number here, that's 12, and then you subtract, you get 1. And then you can bring the next number down right you ask yourself again how many times does 33 go into 14 again four times and four times 13 is 12 you subtract you get two and then you can bring the seven down right you ask yourself again how many times does 13 go into 27 evenly nine times so you get a nine here nine times three is 27 you subtract it, you get zero. When you get a remainder of zero, it means this number goes into this number evenly. And how many times is that? 449. So 1, 3, 4, 7 divided by 3 is 449. Zero remainder, so it just goes into it evenly. Okay. Is that, does that help you out? Oh, all the memories of the long division process are coming back to me. I think I understand it now. I appreciate it a lot. My my pleasure. I'm glad it's working out. I see, I see. Ozzy says, wow, wait, that's so simple. The way that my teacher explained it to me was a lot more tedious. Yeah, I'm not a defender of our centralized education system. That is, that that is, uh, it is what it is, right? I don't know why they make it so complicated. It's not. You could have more complicated stuff you're doing division with. Here, let's do a polynomial division. Watch this. You got this? You can take a screen cap if you want. This is notes. Now watch this. We'll move on from integers, right? Let's do polynomial long division, right? Which is something that you need to learn how to do in grade 12 mathematics because it's important. So for example, let's assume you had this x squared plus 5x minus 7 divided by x plus 1 right it's the same concept right that's a polynomial that's a polynomial you're asking yourself how many times does this divide into the top right so you lay it out the same way x plus 1 and x squared plus 5x minus 7 so again you ask yourself Hello, crafter. How are you doing? You ask yourself, and you're only looking at the first number, first letter or variable or number here. How many times does x go into x squared? Right? Well, it goes in x times. Or what do you multiply x by to give you x squared? You're trying to get rid of this guy, right? You multiply it by x. So x multiplies this and this because there's two terms here, right? So whatever you put up here multiplies everything here. X times X is X squared. X times one is X. So you take this, multiply by these guys, and you put the result here and you subtract this from this, right? So the way you can write it is you go, oh, this whole thing subtracted from that. But I don't like it, that makes it too complicated. So what I do is, what I do is, I call it the same thing. You subtract this from this, but all I say is multiply this by negative one and add it to that. So when you multiply by negative one, everything just changes signs. So if this is plus x squared, positive uh, x squared, it becomes negative and this becomes negative. So x squared minus plus a negative x squared or x squared minus x squared is zero. They kill each other. And then 5x minus x is 4x. And then you can bring this one down, minus 7. And you ask yourself, how many times does x go into 4x? Well, it goes 4 times. So you go plus 4. This multiplies this and this again. x times 4 is 4x. x times 1 is, oh, sorry, 4 times 1 is 4. Change the signs and add them. This kills this. This becomes negative 11. Does x go into negative 11? No, it doesn't go anymore, right? It doesn't go anymore, right? 
So the way you write this is this divided by this is equal to x plus 4 plus negative 11 over x negative 11 over x plus 1. Okay, that's what it is, right? This is called the division statement. Okay. The way you can write this is, and check this out, you can do it this way as well. Okay. Um, should I show you that? Should I show you that? Uh, yeah, here, let me show you this. This is d of x. Let's refer to it as d of x. It's a polynomial d of x. Okay. Let's call this small d of x, the divi divisor, dividend, dividend, divisor, the other way around. This is called the q of x, the quotient. This is called r of x. Okay. Now, if you're going to write this in these terms, okay, you can write it like this. This guy is big D of X divided by little d of X is equal to Q of X plus R of X over little d of X, right? So this is called the division statement in grade 12 polynomial long division and stuff like this, right? Evil to all, I choo choo, I'm glad you are in, uh, in inventing new math. <laughs> I wish I was inventing this, I'm not, I'm regurgitating, right? So this is called the division statement, one version of it. Here's another way you can express this, simpler. Multiply everything by the common denominator, which is d of x right now. When you have fractions in an equation, you can get rid of the denominators by multiplying by the common denominator. So multiply everything by d of x. So big D of x divided by little d of x, well, d of x kills d of x, so this side becomes big D of x. Q of x times d of x becomes Q of x times d of x plus R of x over d of x is just R of x. Okay. If we express, use this to express this, then this becomes x squared plus 5x minus 1 is equal to the quotient, which is x plus 4, times the divisor, which is x plus 1, is equal to negative 11, not equal to, sorry, minus 11, right? So if you foil this baby out and subtract at 11, you get this. Oops, this is a 7, my bad. Okay. We can test it, okay. Foil it out, you get x squared plus x plus four plus four minus 11. Combine your like terms, you get x squared plus, this is four x, five x minus seven. That is the same as that. And this is one way of writing it, okay. So this division comes into play higher level mathematics it is quite important okay all right ozzy hey chicho i have to go to sleep but i really appreciate the help my time to leave has arrived but i really got a lot of value from the teaching this quick lesson that you've given awesome i genuinely appreciate it a lot the internet needs more people like thank you very much uh, ozzy appreciate the love and i'm glad we could help out we've got to do at least a little bit of math during the math stream don't redeem points. Hedgy says, yeah, someone redeemed a taco. Remember, we're going to do an auction uh, November uh, where we're going to auction off some goodies and I'm going to send them out to people as a thank you for being here and uh, building up points, right? It'll be comic books. It'll be applesauce. And we'll see what else we can do. Oh, it'll be, tr it'll be these guys. It'll be these guys drug war trading cars that we did readings for right so if you have points don't redeem them at taco if you want your points back let me know i'll reimburse the points to you joe chicho what is the difference between algebraic long division and synthetic long division? synthetic long division is just a quicker way of doing this here i'll show you the synthetic long division right check this out yo first time chat lich Dragon, how are you doing? I'll tune in more often. Goodbye, goodbye, sweet dreams, Ozzy. 
Take a look at uh, synthetic long division. We'll do the same guy. I'm going to erase these guys. Right? This is what we got with the long division, right? Here's what we can get with synthetic long division. Want to become famous by more <laughs> followers and viewers? Uh, not really. First time chat. Jella, I have no idea what you're doing right now, but I know some math thing that might be very, very useful. I will type it in next message. Okay. Hello, I'm a snake. How are you doing? Hey, Chicho. Good to see you again. Which math subject should I learn to teach high school math aside from algebra and trigonometry? Which math subjects should I learn to teach high school math? Uh, to teach high school math, you need to learn everything. Uh, so yeah, you would have to learn everything, but I would say start off with the basics first. Learn how to deal with fractions right away, ratios right away, factor polynomials, uh, how to move around an equal sign right away, powers and all that stuff really well. That's where a lot of people have problems with initially, right? And then you gotta get into a function as graphing and stuff like this. But let's assume we wanted to do this. We wanted to do synthetic division on this, right? x squared plus 5x minus 7 divided by x plus 1. So what you do, you do this. Take the coefficients in front of these guys and lay them out. 1, 5, negative 7. And you're going to do it this way. And you're going to take x plus 1 and you're going to set it equal to 0 because you're assuming that might be a factor of that. And you're going to write this as x is equal to negative 1. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to go x is negative 1. You're going to divide it into that. So what you're really doing is you're subbing in x is equal to negative 1 for x. And you're trying to find out what the remainder is. If the remainder is 0, that's the remainder theorem just telling you that you're on the x-intercept. In this case, if it happens to be negative 11, that means if you sub in x is equal to 1 into this polynomial, your y is negative 11. It's a point that you just got. I'll show you how that works, right? So the way you do synthetic division, your first order is to bring this guy down and you multiply this by this. One times negative one is negative one. Add these guys up, you get four. Bring this guy here, multiply by negative one, becomes negative four. Add these guys up, you get negative 11, right? What you have now is this is this 1x plus 4. So you took an x squared and divided by an x. Your result is going to be 1 less x. So this part becomes x plus 4, okay, which is that guy there. This guy is your remainder, negative 11. So what this really means is if you have this polynomial function f of x is equal to x squared plus 5x minus 7. If you find f of negative 1, basically sub in negative 1 for x, you're going to get negative 1 squared plus 5 times negative 1 minus 7. This is going to be 1. What? Oh yeah, 1 <laughs> minus 5 minus 7, which is going to be 1 minus 5 is negative 4, plus negative 7 is negative 11. So you just went f of negative 1 is equal to negative 11. So on a grid, right, on a grid, negative 1 and negative 11, negative 1 and negative 11 is a point on this graph. Okay. And this is a parabola that opens up. So it's going to be looking, it's going to be like this or like that. What's the y-intercept? Y-intercept is negative 7. Here's negative 7, 0 and negative 7. So the graph looks like this. I don't know where, where the vertex is. I would have to do uh, completing the square to find the vertex on it. Right. Mamu Chicho, do you teach any anything related to aviation math-wise? I haven't done, no. We... Uh, you know we do do some stuff with physics uh, when I do get physics students coming in but I really I wouldn't call it aviation I haven't done no would be cool though would be super fun J 
G Jela. So here's the thing. I realized this a month ago. If one car, one car starting from point A going 50 kilometers per hour, and second car from point B going 90 kilometers per hour, both have to travel 280 kilometers to end. But question is, when do they meet each other? In two hours, because uh, 50 kilometers times 50 kilometers plus 90 kilometers equals 140 and whole distance 280 divided by 140 is 2 so they meet in 2 hours is very simple and much easier than uh, some countings uh, well you wouldn't be counting it you would just do the algebra for it right physics for it I haven't done this in 10 plus years and never understood it now I'm watching this and I'm starting to understand it nice and that's what happens uh, dragon niche dragon um, after the fact as you get older it, some of the mathematics that you might have done in the past makes more sense because you have a logical uh, sort of life experience and things may may make more logical sense uh, that's the way it worked for me anyway okay and uh, la if you want to do your question okay let's do this physics question let's erase this watch this if I remember how to do it I should remember how to do it teach you very cool very cool sleepy way here's two cars here's two cars Boop. oh hold on they're gonna be they would have to start at different times we don't have a full problem here or are they traveling towards each other we need one specification I'm assuming they travel towards each other uh, go on the second car from point B hold on I realized this a month ago if a car starting from point A going uh, a second car starting from point B both travel have to travel to to end the question is when did they meet I'm assuming they would have to be like this and here's car a Whoop. car a is going 50 kilometers per hour 50 oops 50 kilometers per hour 50 kilometers per hour here's car B Car B is going 90 kilometers per hour. Car B is going this way, car A is going this way, and the distance between them is 280 kilometers. 280 kilometers. Where do they meet? Where do they meet? One car is on place A and second car going against them from the other side. Yeah, so this would be it, La. Right? So basically, we want to find out where they meet. And where they meet, if they leave at the same time, it would be the same time that they started, right? So your question is we need formulas for this and we need formulas for this we need our kinematics formulas um, the distance how should we do this uh, let me think about this for a second the distance should we do a distance time so distance equals velocity times time let's do this start off with basic equation distance is equal to velocity times time over here too distance is equal to velocity times time right now the total distance, this is D1, this is D2, this is D1, a V1, this is D2, and the time is going to be the same, right? When do they meet, not where? Yeah, when do they meet? Well, once you figure out the where, you can figure out the when as well, but you do this. Now the total distance, D total, is equal to D1 plus D2. Does that make sense? this distance plus this distance is equal to the total distance right so the total distance d1 is v 
1 t plus d2 is v2 t. And the total distance is just d total. Right? Now keep in mind, if they left at the same time, right, then their times is the same because their time of traveling, they left at the same time. When they meet, they would have been traveling the same amount of time. So t is the same for both, right? So d total is equal to, what you can do here is factor out the t because this t is the same for both. So you factor out the t, it's common, right? And you got v1 plus v2. Well, we know what the distance is total. We know what v1 is, is 50. We know what v2 is, is 90. So we can figure out the time. So this becomes 208, oops, 280 is equal to t 50 plus 90. So it's going to be 280 is equal to t times 140 and then divide by 140. So t is going to be equal to 280 over 140. The zeros kill each other and 14 goes into 28 twice. So in two hours, they meet. Does that make sense? This is a nice question. I like these physics questions. Fun. Physics. We did math. And we did physics. Yeah. Good session. Yes, you did it exactly how I learned it. Awesome. And it's fun to do. Good problem. Right? Good job. Thank you very much, La. <laughs> Joe, Chicho. One basic rule of mathematics is that multiplication is commutative. Yeah. So three times four is the same as four times three. It seems obvious, but I can't seem to get a uh, get a rigid understanding of why it works. Uh, just break it down. Just break it down here. I'm going to erase this. Boop, boop. Here. So cumulative, cumulative because three of four is the same as four of three, basically, right? Bring math, Mac, wow, cool, cool, math. So watch this, four times three is the same thing as three times four, right? Four times three, you can interpret it as saying four things added together three times, right? That's what multiplication is. Multiplication is an extension of addition, right? So when you write this, you're saying four plus four plus four. It's just a faster way of writing four plus four plus four. That's what four times three is. Three times four is really three plus three plus three plus three. Now, what's the proof of this? I don't know what the official proof of this is, but if you add these up, if you do the addition of it, this is equal to 12. And if you add these up, this is equal to 12. So 12 is equal to 12. And this isn't an official proof. This is just a visualization of how it works. Uh, as for the official proof, this is one of the axioms of mathematics. And I forget what the proof is. I've looked into it before. Four basic properties, cumulative, distributive, transmitted, and identity. Or I think they're called axioms. Yeah. The axioms of math there's actually five axioms of mathematics one of them is distributive cumulative uh, trans is that what it is i don't know what the fifth one is um i think mathematics is based on five axioms i can't remember what the fifth one is and i don't know the names i actually don't know which one it, all of them are Cumulative, distributive. Uh, I don't. I forget. I looked into this stuff a while ago. <laughs> I have two crazy facts about dividing. Just want to share with you for sure. Share away, lah. 
I can only recall four. Uh, yeah, I, you do better than me, Ronnie. I can only recall like two cumulative and distributive. Transmitted for sure, too. <laughs> so you do better than me. You do better than me. What are your crazy facts about dividing? You can't divide by zero. The universe explodes. Uh, Chicho, I tried to understand the proof. If I remember correctly, it's to do with the number one being the seed of all other numbers is it joe i don't know that i didn't know that one being the seed of all other numbers one and zero you would need zero in there too somehow uh, but that sort of kicks you into a binary i guess zeros and ones so i was never good at proofs for some reason I just I like I like real I like hands-on stuff that's tangible to me not theoretical applesauce and feta cheese very yummy very yummy gang we're almost at the end of the stream discreet math was super tough yeah there was a lot of trying to visualize a theory involved with it abstract to a certain degree which is really weird it was very challenging and fun but it took 80 percent of my homework time not bad just missed it what do you what did you say you are eating chicho i'm eating homemade applesauce and feta cheese and these are apples that I picked. Um, so local apples that I picked and feta cheese. They go amazing together. A salty feta cheese and sweet applesauce. It's like a treat. Now, first thing is that dividing uh, symbol is basically a snippet where upper and lower numbers are refund refunded by dots. Oh, okay, okay. It's this. Golden apples and white down. <laughs> Come on, she says golden apples and white down. <laughs> so division symbol is this. Watch this. The division symbol is this and a fraction is let's say 27 over 2 so the dots are the numbers is that what you mean joe joe chicho something that i have always been confused about is why multiplication produces a linear line on a graph by div but division produces a curve ah. if division is the inverse of multiplication why does one graph align and the other a curve? Oh, because there is, uh, this is a reason. I'm just trying to visualize it. Because zero, we can't divide by zero. Linear involving constant. Yeah, because we can't divide by zero. So for example, I f uh, what did Ronnie say? Linear involving constant. Yeah, it's like for example f of x is equal to x right if you have this this is a line really which is y is equal to x which means when x is 1 y is 1 when x is 2 y is 2 when x is 0 y is 0 when x is negative 1 y is so it's just a line like this right but if you have this f of x is equal to 1 over x this is problematic one of the reasons is problematic is because we can't define divide by zero it's undefined at zero it's undefined at zero it becomes an asymptote like ronnie says right so if you do this you get this my graph sucks and this you can't be at zero because you can't divide by zero it's the one restriction we have in mathematics dividing by zero is undefined that's the problem right if you go one divided by zero undefined 
you can't be here so that becomes an asymptote and by definition of this thing this becomes an asymptote too that's why you get this going on okay sorry my english coming from translator so few words might be wrong no that's okay la i hope that makes sense uh, same for the function natural log same for function natural log hello snake chicho i've been hearing that peak mass is not the best method for solving equations is that true uh peak mass is for simplifying expressions solving equations you should go the other way sam sam sad mip i guess it's the other way around for us it's bed mass like they, they always push it on you bed mass bed mass bed mass bed mass bed mass this is for uh simplifying this is for solving you go the other way uh you do your subtraction additions first and the multiplication division and exponents and then the brackets so for me i just say learn your order of operations and learn how to move around an equal sign so you just know have to know how to move around an equal sign or how to manage your teeter totter right la and second thing dividing basically means how many times you have to deduct second number from first to get on zero example 72 divided by 8 is 9 because you have deducted nine times number eight from 72 to get to zero. yeah but you don't necessarily have to get to zero la you could get to another number right you could say how many times a seven how what's 70 71 divided by eight well that would be um seven and seven eighths right oh sorry eight and seven eighths right so it's not necessarily get to zero i guess yeah i guess you could think about it that way too sure maybe have you heard of the library of babel uh joe is asking that would make an interesting math topic library of babel no i know library of alexandria but babel that's ringing a bell but i haven't really i might have i can't remember and if i did it was a long time ago babel library and babel sort of rings a bell but i can't remember exactly La, yeah that's another thing when you can't get to zero yeah it's it's basically it division is you just basically asking yourself how many times does this go into the other guy right whatever you're dividing into tower of babel that's what it is tower of babel that's that's why he's ringing a bell tower of babel not library of babel <laughs> I'm, I'm running that's the same as me that's why uh, the Babel is ringing a bell library of Alexandria and the Tower of Babel and I can't really Tower of Babel is supposed to be like debauchery and stuff like this wasn't it something along those lines gang we got to call the stream we got two minutes left and I usually try to make these two hours so we can uh, no longer so we can load them on uh, bit shoot easily uh, Cheryl what are you doing <laughs> you're still here nice you're quiet gang thank you for being here thank you for the questions thank you for the discussions we did a little bit of mathematics and it was a lot of fun and we're going to do a lot more of these things if you want to know what this is about i am on patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o if you want to support this work if you want to follow this work if you want to know what this is about patreon is a great way to do so we do have a subscribe star page as well where we post everything on there we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e if you want to participate in these live streams in the chat twitch is where you want to be at and gang thank you very much for being here and the support it is because of the collective support that we're getting on twitch and patreon that we're able to do this and some of the support that we're getting on some of the other platforms right we do announce these live streams on mines vk gap parlor bitcloud and getter and we do have a discord page almost a thousand people 
sharing information, participating in discussions, and you're welcome to join us there. The links will be in the description of this video. For live streams where we don't have any visuals, we do upload the audio to soundcloud.com forward slash chicho as a podcast, and those podcasts should be uh, available on your favorite podcasting platform, including Spotify and iTunes. And we will be uploading this live stream to SensorTube, to BitChute, to Rumble, and to Odyssey. If you want to catch all our live streams, BitChute, Rumble, and Odyssey is where you want to be. And whatever the sensors permit us to upload to SensorTube, we will upload there. If you haven't seen this yet, please watch Coherence. Low budget film, this about multi dimensions. Okay, okay, library of is a thing. It is a thing, Joe. Uh, Chicho is based on a novel about a librarian who works in a library containing books of everything that could ever be said. Hmm, cool. Joe again. It's a website that uses an algorithm that converts any 30,000 text into a unique number. So you can generate any 30,000 text using a website. Uh, Vsauce talked about it. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Cool stuff, cool stuff. And gang, closing. Don't forget, free Assange, free Assange, free Assange. Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or our Julian Assange and Wikileaks playlist on Sensor2. I'll see you online on our Discord, on our video sharing platforms, and we'll probably do another round of live streams next weekend. Bye, everyone. I hope you have a fantastic week.